today's topic here is nursing informatics leadership. Uh, main discussion is still derived from the book of Udan and uh, Ku. So let's talk about nursing informatics leadership. Now, um, when we talk about nursing informatics leadership, basically yung pag-uusapan natin dito is if you are a leader, what's the importance of nursing informatics to your role as a leader or a manager? And um, what are the possible ways for you to address the issues that may arise in nursing informatics? Because we are looking forward that you will be leading also a team of nurses later on in the future. If you would look at the nurse manager's role, no, pag sinabi kong nurse manager, yung mga pumapasok siguro sa isip natin dapat is head nurse, tapos meron tayong nurse supervisor. If you would look at the role of your nurse supervisor, um, one of the role is to oversee the clinical on um operations on the patient care rendered by the staff nurses. So they are the one who would be able to detect kung ano yung mga problema ng mga nurses in the clinical setting. Sila din yung nagdi-determine kung ano yung mga dapat nating uh, ayusin sa operations natin. Anong supplies ang kulang? Kamusta yung schedule ng mga nurses? So that's what we meant by operation. Then we they are also the ones who would troubleshoot related problems. Ibig sabihin halimbawa pag may patient na mag-complain in the clinical setting, the one that will be addressing that complaint will be your head nurse and then your nurse supervisor bago po yung chief nurse. Okay? Now, when it comes to healthcare information technology, your nurse managers should be aware of these applications in the workplace. Okay? Kadalasan kasi especially in our setting, kadalasang sinasabi ng mga head at saka ng mga supervisor na uy, technology yan, hindi pa natin kakailanganin yan, hindi naman importante yan sa patient care. But right now, they are already transitioning towards the appreciation and use of technology because of its impact on decision making. So kung nakikita ninyo, the role of the nurse supervisor, the nurse, the head nurse that I am talking about, would be on clinical information going towards information technology use in the workplace. Now, if you would look at the essential informatics competencies, pag sinabi natin essential, ibig sabihin, by the time that you graduate, you are already able to have these competencies. In other words, marunong na kayo dapat na gawin itong mga bagay na to by the time that you will finish your BSN program. And that would include one, mastery of basic computer competencies. So hindi na po pwedeng sabihin ngayon na sir, hindi po ako marunong mag-computer. Sir, hindi po ako pwedeng mag-request dahil hindi po kami tinuruan ng computer. Dapat alam nyo kung paano gawin yan because it's part of your competencies. Then you need to be able to comprehend information. Ibig sabihin, no, in a day for example, bibigay tayo ng census. Pag sinabi kong census, that's the total count of your patient in your unit okay, for that day. So, you should be able to comprehend ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng admission? Ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng discharge? Ano nga bang ibig sabihin na nag-transfer yung isa kong pasyente? Okay? You should be able to comprehend this information so that you will be able to convey its importance to your respective nurse managers and nurse supervisor. And other than that, you should be able to understand information management. Paano po natin makukuha ang mga competencies na yan? When you are already in the clinical setting, do not just content yourselves that you will just be clicking something and then that's it. Okay? Kasi pag pupunta kayo sa system, halimbawa, titingnan mo, plain NSS. Magre-request ka ng plain NSS, it will be there. It will be provided for you by the pharmacy. If you will be requesting syringes in the computer, the pharmacy will be providing those syringes to you. But you as a nurse, should be able to understand paano nga ba nakakarating itong request sa pharmacy. Ano nga ba ang gagawin ng pharmacy by the time that they will receive it in such a way that you will be able to capture the legalities and you will be able to capture the stock management that is being rendered or done in the system. Okay? So hindi kasi guys pwede na makontento na tayo click-click lang pagkatapos request-request, tapos na we should be able to understand what's happening to the system for us to be able to address you know, the concerns that may arise from the system. That's why you are having these lessons. Okay? And in this lesson, hopefully we will be able to discuss why the technology lifecycle virtually ensures the perpetual HIT or healthcare information technology decision-making in healthcare, describe the need for the executive nurses or leaders, 
to commit to lifelong learning if they are to participate and actively lead HIT decision making and then identify identify the two most important HIT processes that demand okay, nurse executive involvement and then discuss the standard practices in nursing informatics. Okay, that's why kung nakikita niyo sa last part ng lessons, it talks about the competencies. Now, let's first talk about the role of the nurse. Now. And in the role of the nurse, one of the roles there is to become a nurse executive in the information technology decision making. Pag sinabi natin nurse executive in the information technology setting, ibig sabihin you're the boss. Okay? You're the top. Boss. Now, pag sinabi nating nurse executive, you could be occupying high-ranking positions, okay? other than being the chief nurse. You could be the chief operating officer of the hospital. You could be referred to as the chief nursing uh, officer of the hospital. And there are already instances wherein the nurse is also the CEO of the hospital. Okay, as in the chief executive officer of a certain hospital. And if you're looking, for example, abroad, you could be the chief executive officer for the series of hospitals. No? Okay? May mga nurses po na na yung role kalaki when it comes to information technology and even in the entire practice of nursing. Now, the nurse executive and then the HIT, okay? your health information technology. Ano pong dapat gawin ng isang nurse executive in terms of technology? Dapat po, he or she will be able to update and advance HIT knowledge. Okay? Let us not be contented of what we learned from school. Every two years, you are recommended to have updates. Okay? Every two years, recommended na meron tayong updates. Pag sinabi kong updates, salimbawa, ano, kahit boss na ako, kailangan kong humingi ng mga opinion ng ibang experts on the field. That's one way for me to get the update. Second, I need to attend seminars. Third, I also need to attend training and workshop to enhance okay, what I know about health information technology. We need also to understand the functionality level information. In other words, if I'm talking about the HIS, your HIS is your hospital information system. Pag sinabi kong HIS or hospital information system, dapat ako bilang executive alam ko kung ano ang functions. Dapat alam ko kung ano yung ginagawa ng system ko. Okay? I should be able to understand what my system is doing or else or else you will not be able to understand why your end users are acting like that. Okay? You will not be able to understand why your end users are acting like that. Now, if I say end users, I am referring to staff nurses, nurse assistants, for example, and then other healthcare professionals in our setting. Okay? Now, kapag ako'y boss at saka hindi ko alam na ay kaya pala itong gawin ng system namin, the nurses will not be able to explore it. Okay? By the time that the nurses will say, Boss, hindi namin nagawa kasi nga hindi naman kaya ng system yan. I will just say, ay okay, sayang naman. Without knowing that it might actually be done by the system. Okay? Itong tatandaan ninyo, ha? Once you are already in the boss level, once you are already a manager, don't allow that you don't know what's happening on the ground. Because oftentimes, the problem is there. Okay, oftentimes, small problems would arise there that would keep an address would mean millions in your organization. Okay? Now, halimbawa, ganito lang. Sa system, plain NSS. Familiar tayo ng plain NSS, di ba? IV fluid ang plain NSS. Are you familiar with it? Have you heard plain NSS already? Okay, in your yes, fundamentals? Sir. So it's an IV fluid, no? IV fluid siya. Halimbawa, guys, yung plain NSS ko nakalagay sa system that the remaining stock is 10. Okay? Remaining stock ng plain NSS ko sa system, 10. If I am the boss, I would write away request for it. Okay? Even I would have an emergency request for it because I'm a hospital. How come na 10 lang yung plain NSS ko dyan? Okay? That's already something alarming on my end as a nurse manager, for example. Now, pero pagpunta ko ng mga units, pagpunta ko ng pharmacy, Pagpunta ko ng pharmacy, nakita ko ang rami pa palang plain NSS doon. Okay? And then for example, there are actually 100 boxes of plain NSS in the pharmacy. 
right there and then you will be able to know may problema sa system. Kung hindi man problema sa system, baka yung problema, yung tauhan mo doon sa pharmacy, yung tauhan mo sa stock management, baka hindi na encode ang mga stocks na dumadating. Okay? Are, are you getting my point on that? Okay? Kahit gano'ng kaganda yung computer system, if there is a problem with your staff, you will have a problem in your decision making as a manager. That's why you should be able to understand how the system works, what is the system doing for you to make big decisions when it comes to your healthcare. Okay? Bakit po big decisions? Halimbawa kapag wala akong plane na SS, pwede akong mag-change ng supplier. Okay? And then I will tell the previous supplier, you're, you're, not, you're not into our commitment. Okay? Hindi mo sinusunod yung commitment natin na dapat hindi ako nauubusan ng plain and SS. Gusto kong mag-change ng supplier. And that implication might be millions in your hospital. Okay? So don't just rely on the system. You need to check on the ground what is happening. Then understand complex enterprise-wide integration, data and process mapping, and business analytics. Pag sinabi natin complex enterprise-wide integration, pag sinabi ko guys na enterprise-wide, ibig sabihin it's not only my hospital. Okay? Hindi ko tinitingnan yung hospital ko lang. Tinitingnan ko yung other companies that are giving to my hospital. Tinitingnan ko yung other stockholders that are giving to my hospital. I'm also looking into the things that I need to pay for the other organizations. Ibig sabihin everything. Okay? We should be able to understand and look at everything. We should be able to know the data and process map and then the business analytics. Okay? Then, understand the delicate interplay of nursing and outcome data. We need to understand that nursing, what we are doing in nursing, impacts the outcome of the patients in the hospital setting. Okay? Halimbawa, nag-desisyon ng nursing department, taasan natin yung price ng rooms. From 3,000 pesos per day, gawing natin 5,000 pesos per day. Right there and then, your patients will be unhappy right away. Okay? Imagine that tirate 3,000 lang yung room mo tapos biglang nag 5,000. 2,000 peso increase. It would lead to an outcome wherein your patients are unhappy. Your patients may be unsatisfied with the care that you are giving because of the price of the room that they have. Okay? So, if you are a nurse executive and an HIT, you need to be able to understand all of this now. Now, next What's what? Ano naman yung benefit ng health information technology sa nurse executive? It allows us to give timely communication of accurate data. Okay? We are able to receive accurate data and this data is communicated promptly. Halimbawa, class, in the hospital where I used to work, if I would want to see the status of the hospital for the day, I would be able to see if how many is the how much is the revenue and then how much is the total expense for the day. Okay, pag sinabi nating revenue yung kita po ng hospital, pag expenses po ibig sabihin lahat ng binayaran ng hospital for the day. Okay? Halimbawa, for example, it's May right now, it's coming May right now. I am able already to see what is the financial status of the hospital from January to May using the systems that are available in our hospital. Gone are the days na po we're in na may malaking calculator pagkatapos ito total pa kung ilan na lahat ang naggasto sa hospital. Hindi na po ganyan yung accounting na yon. When you talk about accounting, you are able to transmit the data to you right away in split second. Okay? Why? Why is this important? Because in nursing, this is about life and death implications. Okay? We have life and death implications. Balik ka po sa example ko kanina na plain NSS. Imagine that if our plain NSS in the hospital is consumed, what will happen to the lives of the patients who need it? Okay? Almost a lot of patients, almost all the patients would be needing the plain NSS. If not the main IV fluid, that could be the antibiotic incorporation for my patient. So, Malaki yung implication, life and death. Then, the nurse executive is already actually involved already in many environments or multiple environments. So, alimbawa, your hospital is in this locality. The corporate headquarters could be in another province. It could be in another city. Okay? 
also the nurse leaders are actively involved in the government, in the academia, and then even the business world. Actually, if I would look at it no, by observation, our engagement with the business world was actually quite catalyzed because of the technology. Okay? Mas madali na po kasing sa nurse mag ng mga numero because they can already be seen using the aid of technology. Okay? Now, la la let's point for example. No? Okay? In a month, I will be able to see that um, this type of antibiotics is frequently used in our hospital. Since frequently siya ginagamit sa hospital namin, malalaman ko na ay, okay, pharmacology-wise, ibig sabihin, mataas ang infection dito sa hospital. Kasi kadalasan ginagamit itong antibiotic na to. Ibig sabihin, we are catering for infectious patients. Okay? Now, if you can recall your pharmacology, you already had your pharmacology, right? Okay? You already had your pharmacology. Okay? If we're looking into pharmacology, when we talk about generation of antibiotics, what's the best way for us to start? Do we start with the first generation, second generation, or dapat nga bang mag-fourth generation tayo kaagad? Sige na, if I'm talking about antibiotics in pharmacology, saan po tayo nagsisimula in treatment? First gen, second gen, or dapat fourth generation kaagad yung ginagamit natin? Can anybody tell me about that? Sige na, kung hindi man dito sa chat. Okay, you can use the chat. It's okay, I will understand if you got it wrong. Sige na, try. Okay, maraming nagsasabi first. Okay, first din daw. How about yung iba? Okay, so class, general rule on antibiotic therapy is that if your patient could be managed by first and second generation antibiotics, you use your first and second generation antibiotics. Or, once wala pa yung result ng culture and sensitivity, okay, dapat you'd settle for first generation, second generation before you use the higher generation antibiotics. Okay? It actually prevents your multiple drug resistance. Okay? It will prevent your multiple drug resistance. Now, ano naman connection dito sa informatics na pinag-uusapan natin? So, yun class, sabi ko, no? using the systems in the hospital, we are able to determine, oops, tumataas ang usage ng Cifexime. Cifexime could already be third or fourth generation. Oops, tumataas yung usage ng Meropinem. Meropinem is also a strong antibiotic. Acithromycin, for example, they are strong antibiotics. Pag nakikita po namin yan sa hospital, right there and then, we can talk to the infection control nurse and then ask her to investigate if what is happening. Okay? Hindi naman natin sinasabi na ay mali yan. Okay? Pero we are looking into it. Ano po ang nangyayari? Bakit maraming gumagamit ng malalakas na antibiotic? Okay? Is there something wrong in the locality? Is there something wrong in how they are managed in the hospital? Are they long-staying patients? Okay? Especially right now that in the antibiotics, isa pa, pong, isa pa pong very important use ng system is that the Department of Health has mandated for antimicrobial surveillance program. Meron na pong antimicrobial surveillance program. Sabi po sa atin sa pharma, ilang days po dapat yung antibiotic. Sige guys, in your pharmacology, how many days nga ba yung antibiotic ginagamit? Anybody? How many days is the antibiotic supposed to be used by the patient? Okay, may nagsasabing three, seven days, seven, five to seven. Okay, class, the best answer there would be seven days. Ha? In general, seven days po natin ginagamit yung antibiotic. There are very few exceptions to that. No? Halimbawa ng exception, acitromycin, five days lang yan. Okay, but um, let's go back, seven days. So ano po yung sabi ng ARSP? Antimicrobial Stewardship Program. Pagka seven days, regardless if na-order ng doktor o hindi, there will be an automatic stop. Okay? After seven days, there will be an automatic stop of the antibiotic. Okay? That's the mandate of your Department of Health in the Antimicrobial Stewardship Program. So class, kapag nagbigay yung doctor ng standing order, pag sinabi natin standing order, ibig sabihin tuloy-tuloy lang yan. No? So class, pag nagbigay halimbawa yung doctor ng order, tapos sinabi, si Furoxime, 500 mg per tab, 1 tab, DIB. Halimbawa, yun lang yan. 
Dati-rate, pag yan yung order ng doctor, tinutuloy-tuloy lang namin yan hanggang sa i-discontinue niya. Pero ngayon, with the mandate of the Department of Health on Antimicrobial Stewardship, once it reached the seven days, there will be an automatic stop. Okay? Automatic stop. How about if gusto pa siya ng doctor i-continue? The doctor needs to reorder again that the medicine needs to be continued for another three days. Halimbawa, pag gusto niyang gawing 10 days. Okay? Ano pong purpose ng Department of Health? Bakit ginagawa yan? Para to make sure that the use of antibiotic would be judicious. Saan papasok ngayon yung IT natin dito? Plus, in nursing informatics, automatically, on the seventh day na naman, pwede pong iset ng IT ninyo na mag-a-alarm lang yung computer. At saka sasabihin, okay, seven days, automatic, stop na. Okay? Now, kapag walang computer, manual po namin ginagawa yan. Eh. Binibilang mo two, uh, two times a day yung BID, di ba? So, bibilangin mo 1, 2, 3, 4, hanggang sa mag-14 doses siya, nandiyan na yung 7 days. But since we have information technology right now, the trend already is for it to be automatically prompted. Okay? Automatic na. Now, how about the informatics nurse leaders in the academe? No? Ano po yung ginagawa ng mga nurse leaders natin, ng mga informaticists in the academe? So, for example, we are the ones educating the future generation of nurses. Then, we transform nursing education. And one of the required competencies that you have right now as student nurses is your basic information skills. Okay? Required na po tayo na dapat we have basic information skills. Then, we're, we are already using technologies that would support education. For example, you have your learning management systems. And then you also have your simulation in the school setting. Okay, so those are some of the uses of information technology. Although I may say na medyo malayo pa tayo, no? medyo malayo pa tayo para maattain ang goal na yan, but we are moving towards it. We are moving towards it. That's one thing I think that we can be thankful for for the pandemic. Now, how about research in informatics? Guys, napakaraming research in informatics. Okay? Um, in your case as a student, it may be difficult to access the data in the hospital. But if you would look at research and informatics, informatics actually helps to speed up research. Okay? Informatics actually helps to speed up research. Recall your activity in Google Form. Okay? Nakagawa na ba kayo ng activity ninyo sa Google Form? Were you able to start on your activity with the Google Form? Can I see your heart react for that kapag nakaumpisa na tayo? Okay? Wala pang nakakaumpisa? Okay, so class, pag titignan po natin yung activity natin sa Google Form, right there and then, you will be able to realize that informatics is actually helping us in gathering the data. Okay? Napakalaking tulong po ng informatics in data gathering. Okay? Now, um, for example, there are studies about nurse-sensitive indicators and healthcare information technology. Okay? So, yan po yung isa nating tinitingnan. Then, we have business and nursing informatics. So tulad nga ng sabi ko sa inyo, in the business field, the nurses could be the CEO of the hospital, no? chief, of, uh, chief executive officer. There are also positions such as your CNIO, your chief nursing informatics officer. Okay? I have already met colleagues in the nursing profession who are having these positions. Okay? So kung nakikita ninyo, marami po tayong potential. No? Marami po tayong potential na pupuntahan in the future. So huwag niyong sasabihin na ay ako ay nurse forever ako sa bedside. Hindi po yan yung direction na tinitingnan natin para sa inyo. If you can have nurse manager roles, if you can have big roles in your institution, go for it. Okay? Go for it. Okay? Now, there's a question here. How can we be able to understand the nature and impact of technology-related decisions? Okay? Paano natin malalaman? No? Kasi we are making decisions. Okay? Halimbawa, sasabihin ko, bibili tayo ng bagong computer. Or sasabihin na, bibili tayo ng bagong machine for the hospital. Paano nga ba natin maiintindihan yung impact ng mga decision na to in our hospital? So guys, we have your six-stage technology life cycle. Okay? If you would refer back to your reference text, no, you would be able to see a diagram that uh, shows the six stages of your technology life cycle. 
So class, it starts actually with planning. No? Magsisimula siya sa planning, tapos procurement, deployment, management, support, pagkatapos disposition. But since we are talking about the cycle, cycle po siya, so it's continuous. No? Paulit-ulit na lang. Forever na lang siya class na paulit-ulit. Okay? So planning. What do I mean by planning? We plan. Anong software yung bibilihin natin? Okay? We do the bidding. In the hospital setting, class bidding is a very crucial part no, of decision making. Pag sinabi natin bidding, halimbawa, maraming supplier ng machine. Okay? Halimbawa, in the locality, there are three suppliers of this machine. Ano pong gagawin natin? We will inform them that they would want to buy the machine. Then they will be presenting their machine to the hospital. And what do we do, class? No? Kung ako po yung manager, ginagawa ko po is we are including the staff nurses in the presentation of these products. Okay? So kindly take note of that. In the planning phase, you start to include the end users, which are your staff nurses. Who are your staff nurses? Hindi po po pwede dahil ikaw yung head nurse, ikaw yung supervisor, ikaw lang yung mag-decide. Kasi at the end of the day, sino po yung gagamit? Okay? Sino po yung gagamit ng machine? The one that will be using the machine is the staff nurses themselves. So kapag ikaw yung nag and you are able to miss some aspects of it, okay, your liability, the responsibility and accountability is yours. Okay? Pagkatapos plus when we are having new machines, tandaan nyo to. If we are having new machines in the hospital, nurses, staff nurses are cooperative if you have involved them since the planning stage. Okay? Dapat you, in you include them, you involve them from the planning stage pa lang. Hindi pa pwede na bukas, halimbawa, bibili ka na ng machine tapos nasabihan mo yung nurse na, oy may bagong computer dadating bukas. Uy, may bagong ventilator na darating bukas. Pagdating ng ventilator, anong sasabihin sa'yo ng nurse? Di ko alam kung paano gamitin yan. Ikaw gumamit. Okay? So again, involve them in the planning phase. Procurement. Procurement class, that will be the time that we need to buy the machine. Then deployment, ibig sabihin, deploy, ilalagay na siya natin in the hospital setting. Manage. Pag sinabi natin manage, it's more of use of the machine. Okay? It's more of the usage of the machine. Then, pag sinabi natin support, that would refer to the end support and the maintenance. Pagkatapos, pag sinabi natin disposition, that would be your decision. Okay? That would be your decision to continue the use of the machine, to upgrade the machine, or to use other machines. Okay? So disposition is about decision making. Now, I pulled out the main bullets there when you talk about the life cycle of technology. And if you would look at the life cycle of technology, there are various stops and starts. No? Napakarami pong stop and start in the technology. There are various stops and starts. And this is internally cost, externally triggered. Okay? It could be internally, ibig sabihin, pwede na sa amin sa hospital, gusto ko na ng change. Pwede na, okay, pwede na na-notice natin na, uy, pangit na yung machine natin, palitan natin. Or, pwede din class na externally triggered. Okay, for example, no, there was a time that the government mandated na all the systems will be updated. So, wala tayong choice. I-update natin yung system. Okay, externally triggered, ibig sabihin sa labas ng hospital. Okay, or pwede din na yung supplier natin nagpalit na ng machine. So, wala tayong choice. Magpapalit din tayo ng machine. Okay, that's the life cycle of your technology. So, I hope that you will be able to memorize these six cycles na. Okay? para you will be able to understand and recall also why do we keep on purchasing technology? Why do we keep to updating technology? Why do we keep on training nurses on technology? This can all be answered by your six-stage life cycle. Okay? Now, let's talk about the three key types of obsolescence. May tatlong types daw ng obsolescence in the health information technology. Now, um, when I actually read of the term obsolescence for the first time in your textbook, I actually searched for the meaning of it. No? Kasi I know there is obsolete. I know there is a word obsolete, but it's my first time also to encounter the word obsolescence. So ano po yung tatlong uri ng obsolescence? No? Now, if you would look at the meaning of obsolescence first, 
It's the process of become, becoming obsolete. Okay? It's the process of becoming obsolete. And your generation is actually a witness to that. Okay? Have you noticed how new phones are released today and then after three years, anong kadalasang reaction natin? Ay luma na yan? Ay pangit na yan? Ay iPhone 12 ba yung ginagamit mo? Old model na yan. Okay, have you heard have you heard of comments like that? Are you encountering comments like that also? Have you noticed na kaka-release lang ng laptop, kaka-release lang ng technology, tapos here comes you after two years, after three years, kung may pera ka lang, parang gusto mo nang palitan. Okay? Sir, may malaking disclaimer, no? Kung may pera ka lang, gusto mo nang palitan. Okay? So class, what do we mean by obsolescence here? So class, this is a reminder to us that the technology that we are using in the hospital setting, in the healthcare setting, would one day become obsolete. Okay? It would one day become obsolete. And there are actually three types of this obsolescence. Ano po yung tatlong uri ng obsolescence na pinag-uusapan natin? One, the technology provider. Okay? Highlight the word provider there. Okay? Their architecture, their product, and integration plan may change. Ano pong ibig sabihin yan? No? So class, pag sinabi natin architecture, it's not the architecture of your home. But what we are talking here about is the software architecture. So pwede pong mag-update yung mga provider natin. Halimbawa, in the hospital, since we are using the health information systems, class, the architecture of the health information system needs to be updated in like in two years or three years, they're doing it. And because of that, that would entail us a one day in the hospital na hindi namin nagagamit yung system kasi kailangang i-update, kailangang i-upgrade. Okay? Next, third-party priority shift. No? Halimbawa, dati-rate yung system natin sa hospital, more ng plus on inpatients. No? More ng talaga on inpatients kasi nga hospital na a-admit yung tao. But right now, our priority is already shifting. Okay? Especially with the introduction of your, ano nga tawag natin dyan? Your primary healthcare. Especially with the introduction of your primary healthcare. Plus the inclination actually is to manage outpatients rather than inpatients. Okay? It's to manage outpatients rather than the inpatients. So with that, ang mga system nag a na rin to be used in the inpatient settings. And then, we also have your regulators unexpected recall. Uh, dear colleagues, in our um, locality here, in our nation, the regulator is your FDA, eh, your Food and Drug um, Authority, no? So, which is um, yeah, your FDA. So, ano pong ibig sabihin ng number three? Halimbawa sa sabihin ng FDA, this machine is declared unsafe. Wala kang magagawa bilang hospital kahit binili mo pa yan ng isang milyon o sampung milyon you need to stop using the machine because the regulatory body said that it is unsafe for use. Okay? So if you would look at these three situations, these are actually the three situations that could declare, there are, these are the three situations that could declare technology to be obsolete. Okay? So, isang example pa yung PhilHealth. No? Dati-rati class yung PhilHealth kasi nagpapadala kami ng papel Pinapadala natin yung papel sa PhilHealth as in the chart of the patient. Have you seen a patient's chart already? Have you been in the hospital na? Hindi pa? Okay? Kung nakita nyo po sa hospital, yung chart could be as thin as 15 pages. It could be as thick as 50 pages to even 100 pages. Plus lahat pong yan dinadala sa PhilHealth okay? for reimbursement. Now, what happened? Um, way back in around five years ago, siguro, 2015, if I memory serves me well, PhilHealth has mandated for the e-submission, e-submission or electronic submission of these charts. So ano pong nangyari? Our hospital needs to buy scanners and then there is already a system wherein the PhilHealth, the, we installed it in our hospital Pagkatapos, by the time na i-upload namin yung documents, right away na a-access na ni PhilHealth. Okay? Meron na pong sistema ang ganun. And then we need to install that system because PhilHealth mandated for it. And your PhilHealth is the national health insurance of the Philippines. Okay? Eh, sir, paano kung ayaw namin ng PhilHealth sa hospital? 
hindi po kayang mabubuhay, hindi po kayang mabuhay ng hospital nyo nang walang PhilHealth. Okay? Because class, the big organization that's paying for the expenses of your patients is your PhilHealth. Okay? And mind you, a lot of people is very dependent to PhilHealth. Okay. Now, what's the impact of obsolescence? No? Ano po yung impact? Kasi nagiging obsolete yung lahat. Okay? Makulit. Dahil nurse executives are making decisions. And when we are making decisions, that would mean, will we buy again another software? Kailangan ba nating bumili ulit ng bagong machine? Kailangan ba ulit nating mag-spend? Okay? It ensures market demand. Actually, bakit po nagiging obsolete yung technology? Kapag hindi nyo pa po nare-realize, no? pag hindi nyo pa po nare-realize, technology is actually viewed by many as a liability. Okay, technology is viewed by many as a liability. In other words, class, sakit ng ulo. Okay, in other words, class, sakit siya ng ulo. That's why learn to be contented ha, with the technology that you have. Bakit po? Technology becomes obsolete because they would want to ensure market demand. Okay? Gusto nilang bibili kayo after two years. Gusto nila bibili kayo after three years. They would want to protect the market share and preserve the revenue streams. Okay? Now, baka isipin nyo, bakit kailangan i-update yung cellphone? Kasi class, para may bibilihin kayo. Kapag hindi po nag-update yung mga phones, ano po yung bibili ninyo? Saan po mapupunta yung pera ninyo? Okay? Wala pong makukuha ang income itong mga technology makers natin. Then we update and we phase out and then we shift in regulatory and payer related priorities. That's why no. That's why as a as a healthcare professional, you should be able to anticipate that one day technology would become obsolete. This technology that you are using would soon change. Okay? Now, how about yung recall ng mga medical device or technology? Plus, I, I pick here a slide from the internet. Uh, this is actually the Bureau Circular of Food and Drug Administration. Kindly correct that. I think on the previous slide, I mentioned Food and Drug Authority. So please be corrected. It's Food and Drug Administration. Plus, this is just an example no, of the mandate that they are releasing to recall the products. Okay? Now, so it is a mandate that they are releasing to recall the products. And um, one example of that, no, Dati yung Viagra. I don't know if you've heard of, your, of Viagra. Have you heard of Viagra? It's a common concept discussed also in your um, maternal and child nursing. So you have your sildenafil. The generic name of your Viagra is sildenafil. Okay? So plus your sildenafil is uh, a very well-known drug for erectile dysfunction. Okay? It's a very well-known drug for erectile dysfunction. Now, Okay, yes, it's for libido, but actually in, in, it has a lot of uses. No? Pero sumikat po siya sa erectile dysfunction. Um, by the time that it was released, a lot of patients had cardiac problems. And for that reason, class, the first batch of release was actually recalled. No? Kinuha po siya. And when we say recall, pag sinabi po ng FDA as an authority, recall this product. Lahat pong product dapat maibalik sa kumpanya. Okay. Pag nandiyan na po yan sa mga stores or nasa pharmacy, kinukuha po yung produkto at saka ibabalik sa kumpanya. Meaning there's something wrong, there's something that needs to be addressed before this product can continue on the market. So that's why if you can see Viagra is still on the market but it is a controlled drug, hindi po natin basta-bastang nabibili without the prescription of the doctor. Now, the same thing happens when it comes to your technology. Okay. Halimbawa, one ventilator. No? Itong ventilator, for example, hindi nabigyan ng permit ng FDA. Pagkatapos pumalat na siya in the hospitals, the FDA can actually have the product recall. Okay? Kahit binili mo pa yon ng isang milyon, pwede pong iparecall ng FDA yon. Okay? Because it's for the safety of your patients. Meaning, one thing that you need to remember is that when you would want to buy something new, Look first for the FDA approval. Ha, maghanap kayo ng FDA approval ng produktong yan before nyo bilhin sa hospital ninyo. Or else you would have training expenses and implications also. Okay? So anong ibig sabihin ng training expenses? The, the situation being given by your book is this. Ta. Halimbawa, class, may bagong produkto. Nag-training na tayo. Pagkatapos after three months, nirecall siya. Kinuha siya from the market. Anong mangyayari? Ulit na naman tayo ulit ng training. 
Okay? So that's why before you do it, you look for the approval of the authorities. And what are the implications of obsolescence? Can we write this down? Okay, I summarize this from another reference no? and articles in the internet. So, ano pong implications ng obsolescence? We need to budget for it. Okay? We need to budget for it. Because eventually, something will be obsolete. We need to buy something. Okay? So, we need to allocate budget for it. Next, we need to plan for it. Okay? We need to plan for it. And then we need to accept that your obsolescence is unavoidable. Sooner or later, technology would become obsolete. Okay? So I hope that hindi po kayo sa mentality na huwag muna natin gamitin, baka masira. Plus eventually, gagamitin mo yan or hindi, the technology would become obsolete. Okay? It's unavoidable. So you need to use it before it would become obsolete. And then class for you to know no dapat naglo-look forward ka when you are buying things in the hospital setting okay? so that you will be able to understand how can you save later on and take note that in nursing we have what we refer to as your multi-layered decision making and pag sinabi natin multi-layered decision making in our setting for example we need to consider the cultural we also need to consider the economic we also need to take note of the social and then the physical aspect of it. Okay? So, hindi pwede nagagamitin lang natin because gusto natin. So, we need to look into these different dimensions and take note that the areas that will be affected is the cost, the quality, the care, and then the satisfaction of your clientele. Okay? Yan po yung mga areas na naapekto. Okay. That's it for our introductory topic na on the use of nursing information system or nursing information technology in nursing leadership.